Hey everyone, it's uh, me Steve here from Appleby Games. Tonight I'm going to be introducing something new. Uh, as many of you know, I used to be a primary school teacher. Um, I had a mental breakdown uh, which forced me out of my chosen vocation. Um, every negative has a silver lining, of course, um, that catalyzed what has now become Appleby Games, which is so exciting and it continues to grow. Um, and I just absolutely love it. And I, I love all of you guys who I get to meet in the store. Uh, many of you obviously purchase online as well. And I appreciate that also. Uh, the one thing I've been missing, particularly recently, um, is you know, my, my school teaching days, my the interaction I had with all the children. And one of the things um, that gave me the greatest pleasure uh, was reading to children. I, I absolutely just loved it. I loved seeing the look on the children's faces uh, as I read stories to them. I loved um, seeing the interest, um, how they were captivated by the books I read and how they sort of engaged in their own reading and they may have taken up certain authors and, and read series of books um, by particular authors. I just, all of that stuff I've been missing a lot. So on a whim I just bought one of uh, my favourite books that I used to read the children. It's called The World's Worst Children uh, by David Williams. He's a fantastic author. Um, I've read hundreds of children's authors. He is right near the top. Um, his phrasing is impeccable. He's very creative. Um, just absolutely all the children, his books never failed. Um, whenever I read a David, David Williams book, the children were just absolutely entranced. Um, they just loved it. They were in giggles. They were fits of laughter. I was as well. A couple of times I actually lost it. I was laughing so much and it was sort of, um, there are some nuanced jokes in there that are for adults as well. And the kids actually didn't pick up on a couple of things and they were just sitting there in dead silence, staring at me, wondering what I was doing. And I actually couldn't stop laughing. But um, today I'm introducing one of my favorite stories uh, from David Williams. It's called Nigel Nitboy. So I'm just going to take it right from the beginning. This is sort of the first time I've done this in years. I had a couple of practice runs yesterday with friends and got some feedback from them. So let's just take it from the top, shall we? Nigel Nitboy by David Williams. Nits are itchy. Nits are scratchy. Nits are scratchy. And nits are a nuisance. Not for Nigel. Nigel was a boy who could never have enough nits. He wanted his hair crawling with them. A tale begins on the morning that Nigel woke up to discover he had a net living in his hair. Most of us would be appalled and immediately try to evict the net. Not Nigel. He was delighted. The boy called this net Mr. Henderson. Nigel didn't have a dog or a cat or a hamster, so he treated his net like a pet. He made sure he never combed his hair. Nits hate combs. He made sure he never combed his hair. Just read that bit. Soon Nigel's hair was wild and frizzy, like a great big bush. A jungle paradise for nets. Nigel fed Mr. Henderson tidbits of dandruff. Nets love dandruff. He did this in the hope of training him up to do tricks, like leaping from one side of Nigel's head to the other. <clears throat> Soon afterwards, Nigel heard of another child at school who had nits. Her name was Tina Ting. Nigel wanted Tina's nits more than anything in the world. He wanted nits, nits, and more nits. At break time, Nigel chased the little, the poor girl, around the playground. What do you want? cried Tina fearfully. I am not playing it. I want your nits, replied the boy. My nits? You are nuts, 
yelled the girl. Yes, I am nuts for nits, said Nigel. The boy tripped over a skateboard and flew through the air towards the girl. Clonk! Their heads bashed, and in an instant, Tina's nits crawled over to Nigel's head. A little dazed, the boy was nonetheless happy. Now Mr Henderson had some company. The next day, Nigel heard of a boy who had nits, Colin Clint. Nigel wanted those nits so badly. So he chased Colin down the corridor and cornered him in the toilets. The trembling boy locked himself in a cubicle, but Nigel would not give up. He climbed over the top of the cubicle and dangled upside down from the ceiling. Nigel's and Colin's heads knocked together. Bonk! Once again, the nits sprang across to Nigel's head. Even the school cat was not safe from Nigel's advances. When Nigel was told that Minky the cat also had nits, he pursued the poor creature across the football field. Once he had caught the cat, <clears throat> he sellotaped it to his head. It looked like a very unconvincing wig. Still, one by one, the cat's nits bounded onto Nigel's head. Soon Nigel had so many nits that even his nits had nits. He stopped counting them at one million and three. Well, everyone, that ends page 57 of Nigel Nitboy. Tune in tomorrow, or whenever I get another chance, for the next chapter or episode in this chapter, if you call it a chapter, it's actually an entire short story, about uh, Nigel Nitboy by David Williams. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed reading it to you, um, and I hope to do more of that in future. I hope your children are getting the opportunity to read some books, perhaps David Williams, perhaps some other authors over the holiday. I remember we are closed tomorrow, Easter Sunday. We reopen on Monday and we are open for the rest of the week, as usual, from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, look forward to catching you all again soon, either in store or online. And thank you very much for listening. Hope you're all enjoying a fabulous Easter break. Thinking of you at this time. Catch you.